Blacktail, Smolder again. Smolder and Zeri and Tristana and Corky, in terms of recent balance, were all at the end of the day kind of like somewhat victims of AD carries being good in mid. And it was fairly important that for Worlds, we did not have an AD carry mid meta. And so there was a lot of work that had to be done to adjust those characters who were going mid and like kind of like taking over over mid and Smolder was one of them. And so the team, you know, put in a number of nurse before Worlds to ensure that we really like got to the heart of the AD carry mid meta. Now, the reason I say like kind of a victim is it's very possible that like, you know, Smolder, Zeri, Corky, Tristana have things going on in their kits that make them OP mid or like strong mid, but that was also paired with like systemic reasons why AD carries were going mid that we also like, you know, had to, to fix over the course of the season. And so it's kind of a thing where once the systemic reasons that AD carries are strong mid go away, it starts being a lot easier for characters like Smolder, Tristana, Zeri to be stronger because then they just won't go mid as much, right? Don't know if we'll ever get there with Corky. He's a bit harder, but yeah. Are there any items you've ever really wanted to make? Yes, actually. Flox is going to know exactly what I'm going to say. Anybody who's been working with me for the last few years knows I'm a broken record when I come to talk about this. I really want AD support items. I have the strong personal opinion that we have like a whole missed opportunity right now where there's a bunch of AD fighters and AD carries that could legitimately be played as supports if we had an, the item system to support them. Similar to how there's enough like supportive mage items such that mages can go down there. And so the reason Senna and Pike are so weird with their kits is because they have to like exist in a system that's not built for them. But I really wish there was items out there that were more exclusively made for AD, like more, uh, not exclusively, but intentionally made for AD supports, such that you could see like support Jin, support Ash in a more balanceable way. I know support Ash is a thing, but the way it's a thing has been a little strong in the past, right? But like support Jin, support Ash, support Jarvan, support Poppy, support Yasu? No, that one wouldn't work. And I know like some of these characters do work sometimes, like 100%. But like, again, a lot of them times they're working in spite of an item system that uh, supports them. And that said, 80 support items are not easy. There's a lot of challenges and issues with the 80 support space that would need to be solved to make it work. It's not just like a, a snap your fingers and make it work. Uh, one of the reasons that um, support mages are exist is not just because they have the items to make them work, but also support mages... Mages are a lot more support aligned to begin with in terms of like the stats they want and how they actually end up playing the game. It turns out a very supportive thing you can do is try to one shot someone in a way that like, how do you make a repeated auto attacking pattern feel supportive? That's a bit different. Right? A lot of mages come with inbuilt things that already trend towards support. So yeah, that's something I would think would be cool for the game, but it is not. Is Umbral Glaive kind of an AD support item? It is, but we need, we need more, right? Like the problem is that like, there's not a system of 80 support items. There's like one. Another thing I wanted to do, but this one's like less compelling is I wanted to make a support item that was mana regen, AD, heal and shield power and cooldown reduction. And the reason I wanted to do that is because it would be really good on Senna and make a ton of sense on her kit and like kind of like work with what she's supposed to be. But she would be the only character in the game who builds it. And so it's probably not justifiable to make a one person item because um, no one else on the roster except maybe Kale wants um, AD, mana regen, heal and shield, and cooldown reduction. No one else really, really wants that. But I think that would be cool. Is it intentional that Lethal Tempo doesn't proc on Akshani? It could be. Akshani, I don't know how it's coded, but Lethal Tempo is a on launch attack, I'm pretty sure. Whereas if Akshani is an on-hit effect and he's not launching attacks, he's not going to proc Lethal Tempo. But I don't know the exact details there, so I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you the exact stuff. Did you, how hard do you watch wor Worlds? What about two years ago when Guma stole every Baron with Varus Q? Yeah, that was like crazy. Was that the reason Smite got buffed to 1200? No, it wasn't. That had nothing to do with it. 
Getting smiting smite bidding buffs to twelve hundred was something to like increase jungler satisfaction, I believe. Like basically jungle has this like constant like frustration of being unsatisfying for a variety of reasons. Like as an example, everybody just flames you all the time while expecting you to play perfectly. Um, and so one of the things that causes flame is when a jungler gets out smited by a champion, right? And so one of the reasons to increase smite damage was just to be like, no, we're not gonna make it unclear in most situations who's gonna be able to get this. It's gonna be the jungler. Unless of course there's like some rare things that can steal. Like Jinx Salt is okay at stealing things. You know, Varus Q of course is okay at stealing things. Cho'Gath's, uh, Cho'Gath's Feast, right? Things like that. But it's generally not a great situation where junglers are expected to always win smite fights and always outsmite their opponents. And then sometimes they just can't. It's generally better if smite is guaranteed in that case to avoid the the flame and frustration that comes with them failing to like oh the gregus are bomba so yeah and i think another reason we upgraded smite changed smite to that i don't know if this happened in that patch i'm not sure what patch you're talking about but like we had the thing where it's like smite upgraded over time and so it was like hey it's going from this to this and one of the upgrades is damage because we changed it from champion level Right? We made it more consistent, but it also needed to scale with game time anyways. So like having it have some steps instead of being like, oh, if you're behind, you can't smite. Did you go on vacation to watch Worlds? No, I went on vacation to enjoy my life and not burn out. I needed a break. I'd been working essentially almost nonstop for 13 years. So basically here is, here is my history of working. I got into high school, not got into, but I entered high school. And then every summer break, I would work to raise money for college. And so it was high school, it was freshman year, summer job, sophomore year, summer job, junior year, summer job, senior year, two summer jobs. Then I immediately went to college. And every year when I got back from college, I would work, except one year. There was one year I took a break there. And so it was, coll it was college at Dartmouth, and then every summer work, including like an internship at a hedge fund and stuff like that. And then... I applied to Riot my senior year, and then a week after I graduated from Dartmouth, I started at Riot. And so I had a whole week break between school ending and Riot starting. And then I essentially have worked at Riot nonstop for 13 years. With, to be fair, I had a couple, you know, like two week breaks. I had one or two one month breaks. So I have had like time off i'm not saying like riot's just been like you don't get to ever take time off but in terms of like a really long just period of relaxation and not working i haven't really had one of those since like either sometime in college or maybe middle school so i'm, I'm really enjoying just chilling and hanging out for a bit did you work during college yes i had jobs during college and during college breaks uh, the job I had during college weren't very intense, though. I worked, like, part-time at the library or part-time at, like, the... What's it called? The, 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 the smoothie stand. I made smoothies at the smoothie stand. So I had, like, part-time jobs at the college. But I worked I worked during summers ever since high school started. Um, how many paid vacations do you have, days do you have? Infinite. I can take technically, technically... I can take as much time off as I want and get paid for it. Riot has unlimited PTO. The catch with unlimited PTO, it's actually a little troll. The catch with unlimited PTO is when a company gives you unlimited PTO, it seems cool, but it actually means you never take it. Because when you have unlimited PTO, you can, you never find the time to take time off. Where when you have fixed PTO, like, hey, you have this many days a year to take off, then you find the time because you're like, oh, I need to use this. And so a lot of folks who get unlimited PTO don't take it. And the general idea with limited PPO in terms of like how it works is take it when you need it. And as long as you're getting your stuff done and your teams like aren't getting screwed over by your absences and stuff, you can just take it whenever you want and it's fine. So I think one thing I do really like about Riot is I have a lot of flexibility when I take times off. And so sometimes I'll wake up on a Friday and be like, not today, not today. And then, and then I don't go into work. And so, so it is nice to be have be able to have that flexibility when I need it. It's pretty cool. That's a good system though, no pressure at all. Well, again, the problem with the system is people just don't take it. It turns out for whatever reason, the way people's brains work is that they have unlimited PTO, 
they don't tend to actually like take the step to take time off. And so you often have to like really pressure people to take PTO when you have unlimited PTO.